Frank got off to that really good start. It seemed like LeBron was carrying a lot of it and played more than his usual rotation. Uh, what did you see change uh, when he went to the bench? Yeah, I mean, I got to look at the, te the tape to see specific stretches. But, um, you know, we did start the game with a lot of juice, a lot of energy, carry over from, uh, you know, the energy we had in the Boston game. Um, you know, it was one of those uh, situations where when, you know, Brown was ready to come out, there was a you know, two, three-minute stretch without a stoppage, and we were on a run. So, you know, he, he, uh, he got extended on his first run, um, held him out to start the second quarter as a result. And, and we didn't start that quarter, I don't, I don't think, very well. Like I said, I got to look at the tape. But the second quarter is where, you know, the energy of the game shifted. You know, um, our turnovers went way up. Um, we didn't rebound the basketball. We were slow at every loose ball. And uh, there was just too much of a casualness to, uh, to our approach, you know, after we got that early, early lead. It wasn't even a huge lead, but we just we got casual. We started turning the basketball over. We stopped defensive rebounding or gang rebounding. You know, if you need five guys to come back and rebound with Steven Adams, and, you know, we didn't do either of those things well enough in, uh, in that second quarter. Frank, it looked like you tried to adjust lineup with Dwight in the second half, or trying to change that casualness you just mentioned. Is that difficult to do within the course of a game? No, you know that that wasn't really about that as much as you know. Um, again, we're we're trying to find our a consistent lineup, you know, and starting AD at the five and Bron at the four basically, um, you know, works against a lot of teams. This team we knew would be challenging with with Jackson and Adams. Um, you know, started the game pretty well, but the second quarter, like we couldn't get a rebound. You know, so um, defensive matchups, we thought we could put AD and, and Dwight in there, use Dwight's minutes against Adams, knowing that they're downsizing with their second unit. We would do the same, um, you know, but it wasn't enough. Frank, how would you describe the nature of the turnovers uh, that LeBron and Russ had today? Do you think they, they would fall under the casual type of uh, approach? And then what type of pressure does that put on your defense to be turning over as a team 22 times? Yeah, I, you know, turnovers are, are always all shapes and sizes. There's, there's never one thing. Uh, I do feel like we, we failed to make the simple play, you know, especially in that second quarter. We had open guys, and, you know, we're trying to, trying to uh, force the ball into, into a crowd. Okay, when a simple play is ahead of you, you know, with guys open, um, there's two plays that stuck out for me uh, uh, during that stretch. But like I said, there's uh, you know there's all, all shapes and sizes, and you know you just have to play the game with a, a level of ball security uh, to win a basketball game. And if you're going to turn it over 22 times, you're going to have a great chance of losing that game. So you know something that uh, you know we're going to continue to have disappointing losses as long as we're turning the ball over like that. Frank, uh, you guys have such a veteran team. You guys know that just because the team is missing guys or you lose a guy the last minute, it, you, it, that really shouldn't matter or doesn't matter um when when the team got out to to a pretty controlling lead early even though it wasn't that big it felt like it could be bigger um are you surprised that a, a veteran group would show that kind of like you said that casualness or that let up in in that moment uh, yeah i wouldn't say i was i'm surprised i've seen it happen with our group this year you know what i mean we have to foot, keep our foot on the gas and and continue to play um you know, you would hope that it's not not like that, that that's not the case. But you know, we have seen it with this group, and you know, we just got to find a find a way to, you know, prevent that from happening. Frank, um, the, the Grizzlies shot 13 more times than you did in the first half alone. Um, wondering, what did you try to to do at halftime to adjust, and and did you see um, some of the the things? Kind of manifest in the second half, or, or was there something else that kind of bothered you guys in the second half? Yeah, we hit our guys hard on their turnovers, and we changed the lineup to help on the glass. I mean, those are the two biggest things that lead to, you know, more field goal attempts. And you know, we talked about that. They got 13 more shots up because we're not rebounding the ball and we're turning the basketball over. Like those two things get you beat. So, um, you know, we addressed both those things at halftime. We've talked about the, the stop and start nature of, of momentum with you guys this season. What, what do you feel like has to happen to have an effort like the Celtics when the turning point that actually kind of manifests into consistency? Yeah, we've, we feel like it's going to happen. Um, we keep getting disappointed when we think it's, you know, we think it's there. We think we've had that, that moment. Um, you know, our biggest battle, our biggest problem this year is consistency. You know, and once we take one step forward, Okay, we, we fall back and we have a disappointing performance and uh, we got to find a way to catch ourselves from that. A parent with this team, guys, 
They're back to 13 and 13, big game, playing 500 basketball. Yeah, I mean, it, this has to be a, a disappointing loss um, uh, to them on the first one on the road trip. Uh, Memphis without uh, a couple of their star players, and particularly uh, Mott. Um, and, you know, just, you know, it was just not a good game for them. Uh, out hustled a little bit. Uh, you know, Stevens, eight offensive rebounds. I think he, he kind of manhandled when he, when he needed to. Uh, you know, the, the Lakers turned the ball over. Uh, 27 points off of turnovers. Couldn't afford to do that on the road. Uh, I, think, I think the Grizzlies had something like 15 steals or something of that nature. So, yeah, I mean, Memphis is a good ball club with or without their star players. And I just don't think the Lakers, you know, really made that, that, that switch to take care of them early. Played good first couple of quarters. Third quarter wasn't bad, but just not a complete game overall. Uh, execution and defense was just, just not what it should have been on, yep. the, on the road. Uh, so, yeah, Fish, um, Lakers in the second half, only 42 points. And after that first quarter, they're outscoring every the rest of the way. Yeah, it was just you know, one of those nights where, you know, a team without, you know, their best player and then, to be honest, their best defender mm -hmm. and, and Dylan Brooks also being out, it, it was important to really get some separation early to, to really get this young team questioning and doubting whether or not they even belong on the floor tonight. Uh, but then once they have the opportunity to still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, the crowd stays in the game. And those guys on the other team, you know, they see that there are more Laker fans in the building than, than maybe Grizzlies fans tonight. So then their pride starts to kick up, and, and then the Lakers just could never kind of put them back in the box once they, once they let the Grizzlies out. Um, so disappointing, frustrating, not the way you want to start a road trip, uh, but you, you must bounce back now against Oklahoma City. Brett, just two nights ago we stood here and showed the schedule, and – you had talked about how they do have the hardest schedule yep. in the league from this point on, but these next five were games that you wanted to see. We all wanted to see what this Laker team could put together because everyone was feeling good, starting to look a little more healthy. Not the case. Tonight. Yeah, I think we need to put a little moratorium on they've turned the corner conversations <clears throat> because you, you think you, they have, like two days ago, you're thinking, all right, good win for the Lakers. James, you went viral, uh, rightly so. Not LA, tonight. They, not tonight, right? <laughs> um, but, but then this happens, and we've, we've been kind of sucked into this narrative a couple times already. Hey, they look good. They, they, have they turned a corner? I'm going to stop talking about that for a while. You know, I want to see the Lakers win four or five in a row and then get back to saying, okay, this team looks like a real contender. Uh, Dylan Brooks didn't play, as you mentioned. No John Morant. That's 41 points of offense on the bench for Memphis tonight. And the Lakers, and, and this team played last night, too, against Dallas. So it, it definitely, James, a disappointing loss for the Lakers. And uh, just have to wait and see if they can 